Hi everyone and welcome back to another video of Architects 3D Printing. This is the sixth episode of the Cura Custom Setting series. In the previous episodes, we analyzed the quality, shell, infill, material and speed tabs in the Cura Custom Settings Mini. In case you missed those videos, I strongly recommend you to watch them clicking right here in the top right corner or well in the links in the description. In this episode, we are going to analyze the sixth tab in the Cura Custom Settings menu, that is the Travel tab. But before starting, make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, clicking here in this little Architects 3DP icon. If you do it, you will help us growing and continue creating new content for special viewers like you. Okay, so to start, as always I'm going to import an STL file in Cura, but this time not our test cube, but something a bit more complex to see the differences in displacements. You can see the whole video of the project clicking here in the top right corner or in the links in the description, where you will also find the STL file of this cool creation from our files repository in our webpage. So we will drop it into the canvas, we will change the view from solid to layer view and we will slice it pressing the prepare button. Yes, it is a very long print, and even a bit more since we have to activate the support. Once done, we will open the travel tab and we'll see that by default we only have two options activated, that are avoid printed parts when traveling and set hop when retracted. We will analyze them later, but before, as always, we are going to click in the setup wheel and we are going to analyze the possible options that we can show in our travel tab in the Cura Custom Settings menu. This tab may be the shortest of the whole menu and probably the fastest we analyze. The first option we find in the menu is Combing Mode. I would always recommend you to activate it in all the parts, but not in the top skin layers, to have better finishes. So for now, we'll show it and we will select No Skin. What it basically does is to make the displacements keeping the nozzle within already printed area. So if some material leaks from it, it will stick to the infill and we won't have any hairs in our prints. We don't want to move it over the top layers since we will have these ugly diagonal lines over our nice finish. Once done, we can just hide the value since we'll not change it ever again. And next to it, we will find Retract before outer wall. You can choose if activate this option or not. In some printers with a bad flow configuration, sometimes the formations can appear in the outer walls where they start and finish, because too much material is being extruded at the moment. You can try it with your 3D printer, but in our case we'll not activate it since we don't have this problem. So we will also hide it from the menu and the next option we find is the one we already had activated. To show what this option actually does, we are going to move the layers down around the layer 175 and we will rotate the view to have more or less the top view of the object in the print bed. Now we will open this color scheme menu and we are going to hide everything but not the extruder and show travel options. And here we have all the displacements that the printer will make in the layer 175. If you see the displacements of all the interior layers, you just have to move the cursor in the timeline of the simulator to the end of the line. Now to see the difference in the option avoid print parts when traveling, we are going to make a screen capture and now we will activate the option press prepare and again make a screen capture. It's now when we are going to open one of the images in Adobe Photoshop and we will drag and drop the other one in the same Photoshop file. Alright, so here we will choose the top layer, that is the layer with the option activated. And we are going to click here and choose lightest color. Now we will press Ctrl U if you are using Windows or Command U if you are on Mac OS and we will move the tone slider all the way to the left so the lines will turn to green. Alright, so once we have done that, we are going to compare both patterns. First, in blue, with the option disabled, we can see that when it finishes the supports in the bottom right corner, it moves to the top piece, and it does it through the piece in the middle. It could cause the plastic leaking from the nozzle to stick in this part in the middle, and basically reducing the quality of our print. Otherwise, if we activate it, the nozzle will slightly change its direction to the right, avoiding this piece in the middle. The same happens in the rest of the parts of the print. So as a conclusion, the displacement distances will be a bit longer, so the printing times two, but only five minutes in an almost 17 hour sprint. And we will gain a lot of quality in the print. So definitely we are going to activate this option. The next option in the visibility menu controls the distance in between the object and the displacement path. By default it is set to 0.625 mm and it's working properly. So we won't change it and we will hide it from the menu to continue with the next three options that we are not going to activate 
but basically we'll control the point around which every layer will start and finish. Next we find Z hop when retracted and three more options that can be changed due to our configuration with the options we just analyzed. So we will only show the option Z hop when retracted and we are going to see what it actually does in a real print. We are going to activate it and we are going to delete the multi-charging station from the Apple devices. Remember to check out the links in the description to watch the whole video of this creation and also to download the STL files from our website architects3dp.com. Now we are going to insert our custom test cube, which you will also find linked in the description, and we are going to use the option right click and multiply to create two more copies of the test cube. Now we will move the three cubes, forming kind of a triangle, and we will press prepare, save it in our SD card and start the print. Once the print starts, we are going to let it print in for a while, and we are going to see what the printer actually does with this option activated. Ok, so if we have a closer look during the print, we can appreciate that each time the nozzle has a retraction or it's going to move to the next cube, the z-axis actually goes up and down, so the nozzle won't touch the parts that have been already printed. It will increase the printing times considerably, and normally I don't have this option activated, but in some cases, such as the scale model of the engineering structure that I printed for a client a time ago, and you can find clicking here in the top right corner, it is very useful. With this structure, I had to do the Z-Hop because it was composed with a lot of very thin vertical and diagonal bars, and I had several failed prints until I activated this option. Ok, so that has been everything for the travel tab. At the end, we have only shown the options that we have already activated, plus the combing mode that we changed it to no skin. Now what I recommend you is to start playing with the options we analyzed today with your 3D printer. And if you enjoyed and learned with the video, please hit the like button, share the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel clicking right here in this little icon that they will find in the bottom right corner. To stay tuned with progress updates and future videos, you can follow us on social networks at Architects3DP. Finally, if you want to support the channel, you can consider to support us on Patreon. From only $1 per month, what will make us extremely happy and will also give you nice rewards that you can check in our Patreon page navigating to patreon.com slash architects3dp or clicking in the link in the description. Ok, so as always, see you guys in the next video.